Welcome back guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this double-sided three-tier planter box. This style of planter is perfect for flowers, for herbs, really anything that you want to put in it. And I'm going to teach you how to make it using a couple of two by fours and some fence pickets. All right. So after I throw on my axle hearing protection and my RZ mask, I'm going to start cutting my parts. And actually this build only has five different parts. And as always, the cut list will be in the description of this video. But again, if you are a plans in the hand type of person, head over to the Etsy shop. I'll throw a link in the description. So this is a very large, impressive planter. It's almost like five planters in one. So it's going to need a little bit more material than we usually use. So we're going to need nine fence pickets total, as well as two two by fours. So now I'm just ripping all of my fence picket material down to size. And for my two by fours, I'll rip all of those down to three inches. And I get asked all the time on what people should sell these for. Again, you're going to have to test your market because the only thing I really had to go off of for this was a three tier version. Tractor Supply wanted $150 for theirs and Home Depot, I think, wanted $150 for their plastic one. Okay, so we're going to start with our legs and we're going to need four of these and they're all going to be identical. And before I took the edges off earlier, I had pre-cut all of my legs to 38 and 3 8 so now all I have to do is put a 35 degree angle on one end of each board. Now to get this interlocking A-frame look, I'm going to half flatten my legs. And to do this on the miter saw, I like to measure down to the center point of my board and use that as a reference. So now all I have to do is adjust this depth stop down to the center mark that I just made. And a half lap can be done with a circular saw or even a table saw. So now I need to mark where my notch needs to go. So I'm going to be measuring from the tip of my angled cut my first mark, I'm going to be measuring up 26 and a half inches, and the second, 29 and 11 sixteenths. This will give us a perfect fit. Now just angle your saw to 20 degrees. I'm going to pause it here just to point out the block in the back. What this is doing is pushing your workpiece away from the fence enough that you'll get a nice straight cut. If you do not do this, the back of your notch will actually be a bit higher than the front. Now I'm just starting at my second mark and working my way down to the first one. And again, there's several different ways that you can do this. If you have a dado blade, use a dado blade. You can remove all the material as you go, or you can leave it like this and get that weird satisfaction of popping all of these pieces out. But then you'll have to go back with a chisel and kind of clean it up a little bit. Totally worth it. Or, like I said, you can just clean it up one blade thickness at a time. Now you just repeat this step for all four legs Give them a little test, make sure that they fit snugly, and you're good to go. So let's just set those aside for a minute. Now I'm going to cut parts A and B, which are going to be for the walls of my boxes. And I decided to cut those stacked, that way that they would be the exact same length. So now let's go ahead and cut part C, and this is going to be the upper part of our end boards. They measure 10 and 3 quarters across the top, and all of our angles are at that same 35 degrees. The easiest way to do this is to make your first 35 degree cut, flip the board, make another 35 degree cut. Now let's move on to part D. This is going to be the bottom of our ends. Now this is a smaller piece, so make sure to always cut it off of a longer board. The top of this measures 3 and 3 eighths and comes down to a point. Once you have your first one cut, I would just use that as a template. And if you're still with me at this point and you think that I have earned to subscribe, it's as easy as clicking my logo in the bottom right hand corner and really appreciate it. So now we have all of our parts cut. So let's go ahead and put this baby together. And we're going to start with our side walls. And there's a couple of different ways that you can join these. You can take a couple of pieces of scrap, screw those in. Or if you'd like it to be really sturdy, use pocket hose screws. Since my material is closer to a half of an inch than five eighths, I'm going to set my bit to half of an inch. And here's a tip. Take a piece of scrap wood and put your screw spacing on it and use it as a template for all of your pieces. I like to put my pocket holes one inch from each end and then six inch equal spacing for the rest of them. And we'll only be needing pocket holes in parts A. So I'm going to be using a little bit of exterior wood glue. Then using one inch screws, I'll attach parts A to parts B. And with these two parts combined, we now have our side panels. I actually started off using an inch and a quarter blue coat screws, but because my material varied so much in thickness, I went ahead and switched over to an inch. So I'm finishing up these sidewalls. I'm going to give a special shout out to this kiddo here, Jacob. He decided to build some of our planters as his first job and 
with some awesome staging and marketing just on Facebook alone, he was able to sell over 85 items in less than 24 hours. Now that is how you get it done. I love hearing and seeing success stories. So if you've got one, make sure to send it to the brag board. I'll throw a link in the description. So with our side walls assembled, let's go ahead and start on our ends. Now I'm going to take part C and just put one pocket hole in the very center. Now you can go ahead and put two in there if you would like. But mainly I'm using this screw as a clamp for my wood glue to dry. And then it's just attaching part C to part D. And again for this, I'm just using the one inch screws. And if you decided to use the scrap pieces to join your side walls, you can do the same thing for these end pieces. So in order for our side walls to match up, we need to take the tips of this triangle off. So for the top two tips, say that three times fast, I'm measuring down three quarters of an inch with my speed square and marking straight across. So to make this cut, that's all you have to do is put each side against the fence and then just cut your mark. And for the bottom tip, I've measured up 11 sixteenths and made my mark. Top two tips, top two tips, top two tips. Sorry, I had to try it. And now we have our ends. Kind of looks like the Superman logo. With your first one made, again, just use it as a template for the rest of them. So while I'm cutting the rest of these out, I thought I'd mention our Patreon community and how it's growing like crazy. We recently broke 200 members, which is awesome. And if it sounds like something that you'd be interested in, throw a link in the description. So can you guess what I'm doing here? Yes, I'm making another jig or a template. Have to find some use for all of those Amazon boxes. So these end caps will be held in place with screws. So I'm just making a screw placement template. That way I don't have to do this. Measure and mark every single board for every single screw. So instead of doing that, just do it one time and be done with it. So as far as the screw placement that I used, I measured in a quarter of an inch, measured down from the top three quarters of an inch, three and seven eighths, and then six and seven eighths. And now we have a jig or template. And that's all that you have to do is lay this over each piece and go to town. Bingo. Now for the screws to attach this, I will be using an inch and a quarter deck screws. And what I'm pointing to here is just the screw direction. We want them all to match. So after adding some wood glue, I'm just gonna make sure that the edge of my sideboard matches the edge of my inboard. You install your screws and then just flip this over and repeat it for the other side. Now what I did not show here, and I actually messed up and learned the hard way, the screw placement is so close to the edge these needed to be counterboard. The head of a deck screw kind of tapers down, so as it gets tighter, it pushes the wood out more. And I actually had to remake a couple of my bottom pieces because they split. But this is the look that you want. The opening in the bottom will allow water to drain. And if you're planning on using potting soil, what we did with ours was just take a little bit of landscaping cloth, cut it in the strips, and then just stapled it to each side. Now I'm about to show you what I was talking about earlier with the screws. And I did this after I had one break off and had to remake it. But just use a little countersink bit. It doesn't take a half of a second and it'll save you a lot of headache. This is what I was talking about about the taper of the screw. Now with all of our boxes made, let's put this thing together. So with our legs interlocked, I'm just going to put a couple of one and a quarter inch screws in place. You can use wood glue here if you would like. I chose not to, that way I could easily take this thing apart to store for winter. And I'm gonna start by attaching my top box first. I'll just bring the edges of my top boxes out to match the edges of my legs. Then I'll attach the box to the legs using one and a quarter inch screws. Then I'm just marking my legs for my other two boxes, which is gonna be 11 inches up and 23 inches up. I'll install the bottom box next, just to make sure everything is square. And the top edge will be lined up with that 11 inch mark that I made earlier. Then I'll just repeat this step for the center box, lining up the top edge with a 23 inch mark. Then with those installed, I'll just flip it around and do the same thing for the other side. Now you notice I'm using that clamp. You see it over there in the corner? That's basically just acting as a second set of hands and making my life a lot easier. And there it is. Beautiful and unique planter that can be designed up in any way that you would like. But you do you. Till next time guys, we'll see ya.